big pharma do what big pharma does and price gouging uh consumers let's go to the common dreams article now this is from uh common dreams and jake johnson and i think this article breaks it down uh very very good and uh common dreams shout out to the outlet but uh you know what i want though i want an outlet uncommon dreams where it's just people talking about weird dreams they had that i i would check out that rag wouldn't you i want i want i want uncommon dreams where you just go it's like a headline like i had a dream my dad turned into ice cream like all right let's see what's going on here so anyway The sheer greed is obscene. Moderna plans a 4,000% markup for the COVID vaccine. 4,000%. This vaccine isn't just Moderna's. It was developed in collaboration with a government agency, said one campaigner. It should be available and affordable for everyone everywhere. Now, I actually dispute that statement slightly. I would say it should be available and free for everyone everywhere. But just a slight discrepancy there. But still, sentiment, I'm on board. Uh, But I think it should be free. So the Massachusetts-based pharmaceutical giant Moderna faced angry backlash on Tuesday following the CEO's announcement that the firm is considering pricing its COVID vaccine somewhere between $100 and $130 per dose. It it costs about $2.85 to make. So that's the markup, folks. It costs about $2.85 to make. Um... The sheer greed is obscene, said PVA Policy Co-Lead Julia Kosje. Now, this vaccine isn't just Moderna's. It was developed in collaboration with a government agency based on decades of publicly funded research. It's the people's vaccine, and it should be available and affordable, I would say free, for everyone. Now, here's what Stephanie Bansell, Moderna's billionaire CEO, or or Stephane, there's no I there, so Stephane, that's uh, Moderna, Moderna's billionaire CEO. So uh, here's what he's had to say about it. This type of pricing is consistent with the value of the vaccine, which was developed with the crucial help of government scientists. So here's where it gets great. In 2020, Moderna admitted that 100% of the funding for its vaccine development program came from the federal government, which despite its leverage, has refused to force the company to share its vaccine recipe with the world. Yeah, yeah, keep in mind, Moderna and Big Pharma, they've been villains in this the entire freaking time, as they always are. Now they're they're trying to de- defend this big price hike, like, oh, it's just what the market dictates. And this is just what we do, whether it's an EpiPen or whatever else, we just price gouge and we don't care if people can't get stuff. We don't care. And even when uh, the vaccines rolled out. There was a huge vaccine apartheid because there were countries that couldn't get these vaccines and companies like Moderna, they wouldn't share the recipe. Now, now here's actually an old interview from uh, Democracy Now! And this is with Ralph Nader, where he is asked about that very thing. Like, why aren't they sharing the recipes? Now, again, the government had the leverage because, you know, they funded these vaccines. They had the leverage And they had the authority to do so. Ralph Nader breaks it down. Let's go ahead and play that clip, Colin. President Biden was asked, um, you know, about providing the vaccines to the world. What he specifically could demand, for example, of Moderna, who got the money at the front end, and Pfizer, that was promised the money at the back end, in terms of sharing the recipe, the formula with factories and manufacturers around the world that are used to producing drugs but just simply don't have those recipes. Well, the federal government has long had the authority to break these patents in times of emergency, which is clearly the case. He's not doing it. The World Health Organization uh, has authority uh, to do it as well. And as Public Citizen reported, we're talking about $35 billion, which is only a third of Apple Corporation stock buyback last year, $90 billion. Uh, so th- there wouldn't be a vaccine without the National Institutes of Health research over the last 25 years. All the basic research is funded by the taxpayer, and the taxpayer uh, doesn't get much of a return. Uh, the, the taxpayer is basically funding corporate patent monopolies over these drugs, and not just the vaccines here, but uh, a whole range of drugs. The taxpayer is funding all kinds of uh, drug research and development so that the drug companies can export their manufacturing of drugs to China and India. We have a national security problem here. There are no antibiotics manufactured in the U.S. There's no penicillin manufactured in the U.S. It's imported from China and India under very inadequate Food and Drug Administration inspections. So, 
Uh, yeah, I mean, he should make it. He, he made a big deal saying he's not a socialist like Bernie Sanders. He is a corporate socialist completely. He is always in his career. Joe Biden uh, supported uh, subsidies, handouts, giveaways, bailouts uh, without any challenge. Uh, and he's continuing to do that. Corporate socialism for the rich, rugged neoliberalism for any, everyone else. So, so that was what was going on then. Now, uh, let's get back to the article here. Moderna's pricing plans come as the Biden administration is transitioning away from its free coronavirus pr uh, vaccine program, shifting the costs onto insurers and patients and leaving the uninsured and underinsured with potentially significant bills. In August, the Health and Human Services Department announced that as early as January 2023, the administration anticipates no longer having federal funds to purchase or distribute vaccines and will need to transition these activities to the commercial market. Now, this is just nonsense first of all right right away this idea that that oh well, well we can't afford it anymore uh it's nonsense on multiple levels first of all if you look into mmt you'll know uh, they can afford it that's just how it works they can afford it second of all if you're like well i don't want to look into mmt okay well look at all these blank checks we spend on the war machine we could spend that at home so there you go no matter which way you want to slice it it's freaking nonsense. It makes zero sense. Uh, this is just a basic cop out. Uh, so the Washington Post, let's see here. The Washington Post, Rachel Robin noted Tuesday that the federal government has paid far less for the company's vaccine than the potential price for commercial insurance. Moderna's updated booster shot cost the administration $26 per dose last summer. So they want to jack that up. They're trying to jack that up. And again, that they've denied parts of the world these recipes. And this is just Big Pharma doing what Big Pharma does. And at the end of the day, this is just yet lesson number seven billion and five why capitalism and public health uh, cannot really coexist. They can't coexist. You can't have a decent public health system when you put capitalism first. It doesn't work that way. Health has to come first. And in the United States, and in honestly other parts of the world too, we're, we're just, we just really turn it up to 11 here in the United States. Capitalism comes first and public health, is it best an afterthought? I think calling it an afterthought is too freaking generous. When you look at our uh, corrupt system uh, of, of health insurance, which isn't health insurance at all, we have, we have for-profit middlemen involved with health insurance. No other industrialized country does anything close to this. We uh, you know, have the price gouging, evergreening, corrupt techniques of big pharma where they bogart patents on life-saving medicine so that they can price gouge it. And they're doing it again here. This is just another example of that happening. And they've been doing it since the beginning, by the way. This isn't anything new. Like, like we mentioned, well, they did this at the beginning, too. They wouldn't share their recipes. And by the way, the United States government did nothing to try to pressure them into it. In fact, as you just saw in the Ralph Nader clip, Joe Biden totally sided with, uh, with Big Pharma on that one and let them bogart the recipe. So, I mean, and, and hey, you can look at Fauci. Fauci has always been a capitalist first. And public health is an afterthought at best. That how, that's how that guy's always been throughout his entire career. When all of a sudden, oh, you, five days instead of 10 or 11. Was that based on any science? Was that based on any research? No. It was based on them wanting you to go back to work. How do you know that, Ron? Because Fauci said so. He said so himself. He said, well, we switched it to five days because we didn't want people to be out of work too long. That's basically what he said. He said the quiet part out loud there. Um, I mean, it's because to have that guy's job in the United States, you have to just be a capitalist first. In public health, it has to be an afterthought at best. And Fauci was happy to genuflect at that altar. And that's and that's everyone. It's not just him. It's freaking it's the United States in general. It's capitalism first, public health. Maybe we'll think about it. And now here you go. They're going to price gouge uh, COVID vaccines now. Add it to the list. This is why, again, capitalism and public health are not compatible. They're completely incompatible. And this is why a for-profit health system uh, should be illegal. It shouldn't be legal. 
thousands and thousands of people die because they can't afford their medicine or because they don't have basic uh, health insurance because they can't go to a doctor. All these deaths are completely preventable. And the rest of the industrialized world has figured this out. And they figured it out decades ago. But the United States, nope, nope. We haven't figured it out. And you know what? We did figure it out. There's just a lot of people who own a lot of stock who don't want that to change. So uh, so that's what's going on there. There's an update there. We'll see how this uh, we'll see how this ends.